Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Before CD Projekt Red acquired the license for the Witcher series, there was another Polish studio that was working on a completely different Witcher game. That studio was called Metropolis Software and they acquired the license to develop a video game based on Andrzej Szapowski's The Witcher somewhere around 1997. That's 10 years before the first Witcher released from CD Projekt Red. This game was supposed to be an action-adventure with moral choices, mature storytelling and psychologically complex characters. Even though this Witcher game wasn't supposed to be an RPG, it was going to have a sophisticated dialogue system with choices that matter. Metropolis focused on telling an adult story within the Witcher game, which wasn't so common in gaming back in the 90s. There is a video about the demo version of the game where we can see some actual footage. The camera of the game was supposed to be very unique and dynamic. It was described as an upgrade to Resident Evil, but the environment was not pre-rendered, it was in full 3D. Now, this might not seem like a huge deal nowadays, but it was pretty advanced back in the day. The Witcher game was only one of the projects that Metropolis was working on back then. They actually had three games in development, and unfortunately, the Witcher game got shelled. The publisher, Topper Interactive, was concerned that the Slavic nature of the source material will not have international appeal. Well, nowadays we know how wrong they were about this after the massive success of the Witcher franchise from CD Projekt Red. Metropolis had to move to other projects in order to keep afloat. Interestingly enough, they developed a game called The Archangel, which released in 2002. This game had some major similarities to Andrzej Szapowski's The Witcher, and that's going to be one of the main topics in this video. What's wrong, fella? You look like something terrible's happened. When we start comparing the elements of these two games, it's very obvious that Metropolis was still under the heavy influence of The Witcher universe. But before we start doing that, I'd like to take today's sponsor, War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat ever made, which is available for free on PC and consoles. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. With an unmatched wealth of high quality content to discover, there's simply no game better suited for fans of military history. I just love the X-Ray feature in the game, which shows you exactly what happened to the vehicle. In the X-Ray view, you'll see precisely where the shell penetrated, which components were affected and what ultimately led to the destruction of the vehicle. War Thunder is a very immersive game with realistic graphics and authentic sound effects which place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. Take command of over 2500 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Use my link in the description and download War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox. New and returning players will receive a massive bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lines and 7 days of premium accounts. It's available for a limited time only, so hurry up. Archangel was a third-person action RPG that focused on telling a story about a character named Michael Travinsky. The game opens up with in-engine cutscene where Michael ends up in a car accident. Yeah, Archangel begins with a modern setting, but this game changes the setting as you progress through the main story. Not once, but twice. Each chapter in the game changes the setting, which makes the game very unique from that perspective. Shortly after the beginning, Michael ends up in the Dark Ages, which is also the name of the first chapter. You need to collect three unique stones in order to progress through the next chapter. Each chapter of the game drastically changes the gameplay elements as well. Naturally, you won't have any idea about this when you start the game, and I was pleasantly surprised when it first happened. Even though the game has a lot of issues with the gameplay, this aspect of Archangel was very unique and ambitious, especially for such a small studio. Michael ends up in a temple, where a couple of priests try to convince him that he's the chosen one who's supposed to kill the demons in the nearby village. Now let's start with the Michael's appearance. First of all, the main reason why he could remind you about Geralt is obviously the hair. It looks very similar to Geralt from the first Witcher game. Even the body type and some details on his character model are pretty similar. The skulls on the left side of Michael's hips remind me of Geralt's trophy hook. 
instead of various monsters from the Slavic mythology, Michael is slaying demons. Come to think of it, not only demons, you're going to fight a lot of monsters in the game as well. These demons are possessing people in the village, and they're also the main enemy in other chapters as well. Michael has a special energy sword, which is the only weapon that can kill these demons. Oh yeah, Michael also has a thing for crazy witches, just like Geralt. People say that I am a witch. Greetings, Navaya. I don't know what people say. I only know that I see a beautiful woman. Didn't know you were interested in that kind of magic. There's nothing wrong with it. By the way, if you think the voice of Michael sounds familiar, well, that's because the voice actor is Doug Cockle, the same guy who voiced Geralt. That's not so surprising, considering that CD Projekt Red acquired Metropolis back in the day, so they probably had the same resources and contacts. For my entire playthrough, I saw Michael as Geralt in a different universe, which is also not so uncommon these days. CD Projekt Red has done a ton of cameos in different games, and Geralt is pretty much everywhere. Even though he hates portals. Not again. Damn portal. Folk wonder why I hate him. Speaking of which, jumping from the Dark Ages to the dystopian future in Archangel could also be interpreted in a similar manner. Those are only a few similarities between these two characters, but I think it's enough to paint a picture. After all, CD Projekt Red was well aware of Metropolis and their work, and both of these studios were heavily influenced by the Witcher universe. Yeah, strange things happen in that company. So I honestly don't think it's a coincidence that Michael has so many similarities with Geralt in general. And let me remind you that they already had their own unique Geralt in the unreleased Witcher game from the 90s. But how good was Archangel actually? Well, to be honest, I had a very hard time with this game in the beginning. I feel for you, this is a terrible tragedy. The gameplay left me with some very bad first impressions. The action combat system leaves a lot to be desired, and the way it works is not satisfying at all. You're essentially playing the game of cat and mouse with the enemy. You have to strafe left and right and try to land a hit or two while trying your best to not get hit. The first chapter focuses on melee weapons a lot, and you also have range gameplay with the bow. The range gameplay with the bow felt really stiff because you have to stop and shoot in order to hit anything. That's not even that bad, and a lot of games work in a similar manner, but the weapons in this game lack hit feedback in general. Using the bow felt like you're firing a gun, and there's a good reason for that, because in the next chapter, Archangel focuses a lot more on actual guns. As for the melee weapons, the special sword is very powerful, but it's very annoying to use. The cooldown for the sword is very long and annoying, and you just have to run around like an idiot while trying to avoid getting hit by the demons. Even though the gameplay was very lackluster, I decided to stick around because of the interesting setting of the game. The atmosphere it manages to create is amazing, especially in the first chapter. And again, it's a very similar vibe to the first Witcher game. Exploring these areas in the first chapter is very immersive, and the music is certainly a major reason for that. Speaking of which, the music managed to properly adapt to the new setting and keep the game immersive throughout the whole main story. The game's atmosphere seamlessly switches from chapter to chapter and it's almost like you're playing a new game. The visual style seems very basic and this area in the first chapter doesn't do the game justice. However, when you get to the second chapter, the art style becomes really impressive. They managed to cram a ton of details with a bunch of unique assets, even though by today's standards a lot of these assets are just a blurry pixelated mess. But even so, you can tell that some serious work has been done in the graphics department. And every now and then you're going to see some very interesting visual expositions in certain areas that you could easily miss. Granted, some areas have a very generic look and feel to them, but for the most part I think the visuals of the game are pretty cool, even though the game didn't age all that well. The second chapter completely flips the script with the gameplay, and all of a sudden Michael becomes Rambo, pretty much. You're going to find a very decent amount of different fire weapons, but unfortunately, they all feel the same. The simple gun you get in the beginning of chapter 2 feels exactly the same like you're using a freaking rocket launcher, it's very bad, and it makes little to no sense. Except for the AR, I guess, which is easily the most OP weapon in the game, simply because of the high fire rate. 
But the gameplay falls apart even more in the second chapter because of the problems with the AI system. NPCs will frequently shoot you through the walls and they can't freaking miss. The cover becomes pointless and the only thing you can do is shoot them before you take enough damage and die. It feels like this game needed at least one more year in development to polish up these features and fix all the issues. Speaking of underdeveloped features, there is a special form that Michael gets shortly after the beginning. You can choose to get a special warrior or a ghost form that you can use as long as you have the energy. I went with the warrior form, which is like a cheat code basically. You take no damage while you're in this form and you can tank all enemies at once. You also deal decent damage in this form I guess, but only to regular enemies. Remember how I told you about the special sword that you need to use against demons? Well, you can't use that sword in this form, which makes it useless against the demons. But the form itself is not useless in general, because it can save your ass in many situations against a lot of regular enemies. You can only heal when you find health items, and the chance for that is pretty random, which can also create some very frustrating situations. The story of the game is not bad, but it's very simple and straightforward. The people in the village are dying. The plague is eating their bodies, turning their brains into clay. The village elder says it's because of your kind. Speak, you are their master. What can you say in your defense? The game doesn't tell you a lot about what you have to do, and the maps are fairly open. The swamp was a bit frustrating to explore, but the level design is pretty good in general. It's not that linear, and you'll eventually find where you need to go by just exploring the map. The maps are not that big, and it's very hard to get lost. Although you're going to do a lot of backtracking, especially in the chapter 2. There is a very impressive dungeon in the first chapter, which took a while to complete. The bosses in the game are really disappointing, because they don't do anything special that would make the combat more interesting. A couple of them have a different phase, and like I said before, using the sword is very frustrating. There is a lot of downtime in these fights where your energy depletes, where you have to run around like a headless chicken until the energy regenerates. All other weapons that you discovered while exploring the map are completely obsolete against bosses, since you can only use the special sword to deal damage. Despite all of those issues, I'm really glad I decided to stick around and finish the game, because it's a very unique experience. I think the Witcher comparisons are very interesting, at least I hope so, and that was one of the reasons why I decided to make this video. Would I recommend trying out this game today? Well, not really, to be honest, unless you're extremely curious. And the thing is, you can't legally buy the game on Steam or GOG, you can only pirate it. Actually, it's abandonware, so technically it's not piracy. Archangel, and more importantly, the studio behind it has a special place in gaming history. Who knows what would happen with The Witcher if CD Projekt Red didn't acquire the studio back in the day. But I have to wonder what would happen if Metropolis finished The Witcher game from the 90s. Metropolis Studio definitely played a role in The Witcher history and they deserve to be remembered. I feel for you. That would be all for this video. And don't forget to join me in War Thunder. The battles in this game are very fast paced and dynamic and no two matches are ever the same. The unique link with bonuses awaits you in the description. See you on the battlefields. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more contents. Many thanks to all my channel members and Patreons. And if you want to become a member or a Patreon, that would mean a lot for my channel and future contents. However, watching the video and leaving a comment is still the main way to support my channel. That will be all, and I'll see you in the next one.